Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're still sticking with the conversation about Pantami, Nigeria's Minister for in Communications and Digital Economy. And it's about the debates, should Pantami resign or stay? And uh, we know that at the House of Reps yesterday, this was raised, and Dujay Lumelu raised this before the House of Representatives, you know, saying that uh, Pantami should definitely resign. There should be probes, investigations, into all the allegations that have surfaced in the past week. But uh, the reaction we saw from the presidency yesterday was uh, Bajabi Amila simply state on the word noted. Let's dig into this uh, situation right now with uh, uh, our guest, Ose Anini, as well as uh, uh, David Dudehi, who was with us for the last segment. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, beginning with you, Mr. Anini, regarding this issue, Pantemi staying, Pantemi resigning. I'm sure you've been following the news for, for quite a while now. Uh, where do you stand on this matter? I think um, we sort of have, have evolved way past the conversation about him resigning or him staying. I, I think he should, we are at the point where given the gravity of his statements, he should be sacked and at the very least arrested and prosecuted. Okay, so, for, so regarding what happened you know, yesterday in the House of Representatives, did you, did you see that coming? So, you know, um, unfortunately, the yes, I did. Um, we sort of have seen a silence from um, the APC political class and, to be fair, some of the PDP political leaders as well. I think just because of the sensitivity of this topic, um, people don't want to get embroiled into a religious conflagration. And it's unfortunate because, again, I said this has been an, an evolving situation and we have seen this move very rapidly from the opinions of a man to, to my point, to, to my mind, a national security issue. And it was very disappointing that the House of Representatives, um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, failed to realize or recognize the gravity of uh, Pantami's statements and actions and chose instead to, to place um, politics over national interest. All right, uh, David, let's uh, bring you back here, uh, in here. Um, what, what does this really um, um, represent to you, um, seeing what played out yesterday? Is it you know, possible that they, the, national, uh, the House of Reps also may not see how damning these revelations are and don't see it as a big deal? Um, and of course, is this also a representation of what you expect from the Nigerian government concerning Issa Pantami? I think they are making the calculation they usually make, which is that uh, if you ignore a situation, the Nigerian people will eventually get tired and move on to the next trending topic. That this is just gist for the Nigerian people. I think, however, in this case, that that's a gross miscalculation. Because I think when you're talking about having a cabinet minister who has access to an entire nation's data, and I mean an entire nation's data, I mean your location data, your financial data, everything about you this person has access to it and this person has links to actual terrorists right and this person now has been implicated potentially in planning a genocide and it is written in black and white then i i don't know how you expect that this is going to blow over this situation is only going to keep on gathering more and more dust it's not going to blow over so again some of the people in question some of the characters in the national assembly um haven't especially struck me as the brightest you know, people in the world. But what, one would hope that at least they will be able to read the writing on the wall that this one isn't going away. People, aren't, people are not going to let this one go. We're, we're not expecting a lot, right? The, the bar is already on the floor, right? If we're saying that we don't want our Minister of Communication to be an Al-Qaeda sympathizer or to be a genocide there, then, I mean, that is the absolute bare bottom minimum requirement. And we're entitled to ask for that. So again, this, this isn't going anywhere, right? I, they probably hope it will, but this is not going anywhere. This has only just begun. All right, David, um, let's hold on and uh, listen to this, this important uh, clip. And if you want to hold DSS and National Assembly responsible, what of you as an individual, over 180 million Nigerians, you were unable to 
the announcement was made the man was presented to the floor of the senate he was screened and no individual out of over 180 million nigerians was able to remember that comment made to write petition to the national assembly for them to act or not to act so if national assembly should be held responsible or the dss the people of this country should equally be held responsible Welcome back. Uh, just uh, quick reactions to all that is uh, currently going on. Um, uh, Ose, I'm going to bring you back in here, um, and I want you know you to share your views on. Um, do you think that this is you know how Nigeria has always been, and this is a you know a clear picture of what the you know the dangers of tribal and religious leanings in a national assembly are? Um, does this you know show you in any way? what we might have been dealing with in a very, very long time. Uh, I th think so. I also want to quickly address the clip um, you just heard. Um, and it's unfortunate that a representative doesn't understand that, you know, by nature of our democracy, he is there representing us. And if he fails to represent us, he collects a salary. He cannot turn around and say, you know, we failed to do his job. Um, and, and again, to, to David's point, you know, it, it sort of reflects, I think, the the lack of capacity or competence um, in every, almost every sector of, um, of, of our political space. Um, that's why you have a character uh, come on, on national television to spout the, the nonsense we just heard um, on, on an issue of, of such grave, grave importance. And I want to separate, I don't know if this was, because I, I missed um, David's contribution. Uh, I, I want to officially say thank you to David for his uh, doggedness in pursuing this story. Um, but you know, there, there are, two, there are two, two streams now, I think, in, in this thing. There's Pantami and his unfitness for office because of the things he said. Um, it goes beyond his opinions, which is entitled to. Um, it's now evolved into incitement um, of violence. And then there's the document that was, was um, um, leaked yesterday of a JNI meeting, four chapters of the JNI, I think it was Bauchi, um, Niger, Plateau, and Kaduna sat down and met under the chairmanship of Issa Pantami, the current Minister of Communications and Digital Technology, to plan how they were going to execute a genocide against northern Nigerian Christians. Okay. Um, I say alleged uh, deliberately because I honest to God pray that that document is, is forged. At the very least, I expect the, the government and the GNI to come out and deny, de debunk, or explain what, what, what the, we, those minutes mean. Because the JNI is not an individual. It's the umbrella organization of, of um, Nigerian Muslims, just like the CAN is for Christians. Yes. So when you see chapters sitting down and plotting genocide, it, it, it speaks to a deep, terrifying rot within the Nigerian system that transcends politics, All right. that All transcends right, Ose. ethnicity and, and even religion. All right, Ose. All right. So, so David, uh, finally from you, you know, we see people here, you know, seeing that Bajabia Miller basically blocked this motion, you know, to, to sack Pantami as minister. You know, people are now accusing, accusing Bajabia Miller and the House of Reps basically as, you know, prioritizing party politics over national security concerns. Well, if this wasn't so, as people say, what steps actually should the House of Reps be taking on this matter? I mean, it's clear what they should be doing. At the very least, uh, Pantami himself should be someone, at the very least, should be someone to appear before the House to explain his comments, to explain himself. Right? The President himself, ideally, is who should be someone. But I think you and I know that at this point, it's, it's expecting, maybe expecting too much for them to do that and for the president to honor their invitation if they do that because you know we don't really have a president anymore we have an emperor so you know it's fine we've accepted that but at the very least uh Pantami himself should be someone to appear before the the house of representatives like there is this very uh damaging uh, conception that sorry misconception that that appears to be prevalent in the national assembly where they see themselves as rulers not as representatives so they don't, they, they're not really familiar with the idea of Nigerians demanding something from them and telling them, giving them instructions. They're used to people rolling at their feet and pleading and begging and asking. So at the point where Nigerians are like, no, we're not asking, we're telling you to do this, they are completely unfamiliar with this. And, you know, then you get statements like what that guy said just now where he was saying, uh, it's you, the people that failed. 
Don't blame right. the DSS and don't blame the Senate. And that's a, that's a mindset that is very prevalent within the National Assembly. So, all right, um, um, David. All I can really hope for is that at this point, somebody finally gets the, the message that this is not going away. This okay. something needs to be done about this. And that regardless of party politics, which Bajabi Amila is punch drunk on, that something needs to be done. To all right, David uh, and Osa, thank you both for your time this yes, morning. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for speaking with us and uh, uh, for being a part of uh, the breakfast. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you very Ooh. And that's uh, where we wrap up uh, the conversations this morning. It's been a pretty tense Thursday morning. Yes, it has. If you missed out on any of it, remember to join us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and same with our YouTube channel. Indeed, and we have a new YouTube channel. It's Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Do check it out, subscribe, and follow all our exclusive content there. My name is Annetta Felix. Thanks very much for joining us on The Breakfast. And I am Osaogi Ogbawan. See you at 9 o'clock.